Why are your astronomy images noisy? How much of it is due to light pollution and how much does the type of filter affect the light pollution noise? Use my updated SNR web application to figure out exactly where your noise is coming from. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. So my name is Mark, and a couple of years ago, I created a signal to noise ratio calculator app to help people figure out how many subframes they need to get a good image. When you stack images, you're increasing the signal to noise ratio or SNR. The higher the SNR, the better. I've been updating it incrementally every few months. It can now analyze multiple filters at once. And I usually update it when I'm working on a bigger project to help me analyze data. I thought I'd share the update with you, and I've been experimenting with different exposure times with narrowband filters. I'll have a video out about that hopefully next week. But I realized that it would be nice to figure out where the noise is coming from in your own astrophotos. So if you're new to the channel and haven't seen my SNR calculator app before, this is what it looks like. I'll have a link to the video that explains how to use it in the description. There's nothing to download. You just go to the link pinned in the comments to use it. It's completely free. If you have an internet connection and a dark site, you can go to it on your smartphone to do real time analyses. Anyway, let me explain how to use it very briefly. So you take a subframe and analyze the average brightness of a light frame in ADU in something like Serial or PixInsight. You also put in how bright your dark frames and bias frames are, as well as your camera's gain and read noise to figure out how much SNR you get as you stack your subframes. You can even tell it what SNR you want. So 30 is usually a good target. And it will spit out how many subframes you need and the integration time to achieve the desired SNR. What's new is that I have added a noise profile to show you where your noise is coming from on a single subframe. It could be from dark current, the read noise, light pollution, or the deep sky object itself. You may find out that the filter you are using is letting in more light pollution than you think. Let's, so let's do an example. So I have a pretty cheap 12 nanometer bandpass HA filter. I also have a better quality six and a half bandpass S2 filter. So let's analyze how much light pollution is getting through both filters. This isn't really a bandpass analysis on light pollution because HA and S2 are examining different emission lines. And light pollution doesn't affect each emission line equally. So S2 is more infrared than HA, and light pollution isn't as bad in the infrared from, from what I understand. But if you have two HA filters with different bandpasses, then assuming the filters are equally sensitive, you could use the app to analyze that. So here is an HA sub of the Heart of the Heart Nebula opened up in serial taken in Bortle's six or seven skies. Let's first get a sample of the heart that I want to find the SNR of. And right below these two small stars seems good. We can see that the mean ADU is about 2268 or 2270. Now this also includes light pollution. We want to find a part of the sky that has no nebulosity preferably as close as we can to the sample that we just took. It's hard to find a place very close. Maybe underneath this star is good. The sky glow background brightness is about 2177 and represents light pollution or sky noise. I've already taken a dark frame and a bias frame to get the average values from them and added those in the dark and bias frame boxes. So let's label this filter as HA. I used 120 gain on my ZWO294 MM Pro camera, which corresponds to 0.9 electrons per ADU and a read noise of about two. Your Astro camera manufacturer can usually tell you what those numbers are based on your gain settings. If you have a DSLR, I've got a video on how you can measure those yourself. The link is in the description. So we put all the data from our camera into the app. Now let's figure out how much SNR we want. 30 is a good starting point. It's the default of the app, so let's just keep it. We also have to update our sub exposure time. I use 300 second sub, so I'll put that in there. So the first graph shows the SNR curve. This was here before, and this table output underneath it shows us the number of subframes we need to get to 30 SNR, as well as the integration time needed. Again, this is nothing new. What is new is this set of graphs here. These show us exactly where our noise is coming from in the light frame converted to photoelectrons and presented as the variance, not the standard deviation. 
We have more dark noise than I thought we did, but the read noise is low, which isn't surprising given my camera and its settings. But interestingly, the sky noise is, is still really high. It's more than double the DSO target noise. So the target noise is also the signal from the DSO, by the way. The target signal is also the signal from the DSO. So the noise and the signal are the same. But to get the overall noise, you can add all of these numbers up and then take the square root. To get the signal to noise ratio, take the target noise and divide it by the square root you just found, or just hover over the first sub on the SNR stacking plot. So let's now compare the HE filter to my S2 filter. I'll take samples of the DSO and Skyglow on the same places in the image and put them into their corresponding boxes, separated by commas. I'll also add S2 and HA with a comma in between. Looking at the SNR stacking plot, we see that the HA filter is plotted as an orange line and the S2 is plotted as a green line. And those same colors are consistent throughout the application. So if we go check the noise profile plots, we can see exactly where our noise differs between the two filters. The dark and read noise are the same, which makes sense. I use the same camera with the same settings and exposure time. But the sky noise is much less for the S2 filter. The target signal, though, is also much less than my HA filter, so it seems like my S2 filter is a lot better than my HA filter. This is probably due to the S2 filter being farther into the infrared than the H-alpha, as well as it having a narrower band pass. Why exactly it is between those two variables is, is still not clear. So keep in mind that HA has a lot more true signal than S2, which means that its SNR is still better. I need about 16 times more integration time on my S2 filter to get the same SNR as my HA filter for the area of the heart nebula I took a sample of. So <laughs> compare filters, compare different sites, figure out how much light pollution is affecting your images. I was surprised that even with narrowband images, light pollution is still the biggest contributor to noise from my Bertle 7 to 8 zone. Imagine what light pollution would be doing without the narrowband filters. Or don't imagine, just watch this video on an experiment I did examining just that. Thanks for watching.